Hi, this is Matricity. Welcome to my matrix. Hope you're doing great today. This is another episode of Spooky Fridays. Today I'm going to talk about a movie that I just heard about called Veronica. Have you heard about that movie? I hadn't heard of it at all. My daughter told me about Veronica because she saw it. She actually watched it before her work one day at like five o'clock in the morning. But it's now streaming on Netflix and apparently it's a really scary movie. I saw some reviews that said that people couldn't even finish watching it. It was so horrifying. Anyway, let me tell you a little bit about Veronica. Veronica, and I'm sorry if this is going to be a spoiler, but this is an old movie from 2017. That's when the first was first made. So if you haven't seen it now, so sorry. Um, you should have all heard about it by now, even though I hadn't either. The film itself was made in Spain, and it's a Spanish horror film made by director Paco Plaza. And uh, the story of Veronica is that she is a young girl who goes to a Catholic school, and she and some friends decide to use a Ouija board. Yeah, Ouija board. Wrong. Right there. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Don't ever use a Ouija board. They decide to use a Ouija board to summon up the spirit of her dead father. But during the session, after a nun comes in and discovers them and breaks the board, Veronica becomes unconscious. And instead of her father, they actually summon up some demons. So, you know, I've seen many Ouija board type movies in my life and they always end the same way. Bad things come to the Ouija board, it's not properly closed down, and then the house is haunted or things come to the Ouija board. So. Ouija boards, you never have a good outcome in a movie because apparently they must be closed properly in order for the spirit world to stay in the spirit world and not enter our world. So it's kind of like the Ouija board is always a portal from the spirit world to our world. And usually they say that unless you're really experienced, stay away from them because most people don't uh, know how to properly close that Ouija board. So it's always going to be a problem. And apparently if you buy one, you can't ever get rid of it. I mean, I've never had any dealings with a Ouija board, but that's what I was told. So I really don't know. Well, anyway, the film itself, let's go back to Veronica, was well received by everyone. Um, in the box office, it made over $6.3 million. Now, I'm a horror fan, and usually I keep up with all the movies, but I did not hear about this one. And it was so well received that it actually won all sorts of awards. Now, in Spain, and I guess this would be similar to our Emmy Awards, it's called the Goya Awards, and it won all sorts of Goya Awards. So it won the Goya Award for Best New Actress, and the actress who starred in Veronica, let me get her name right, her name is Sandra Escasina. So she was the girl who played in the movie. So she won for Best New Actress. It also won for Best Film. It also won the Goya Award for Best Director, and again, his name was Paco Plaza, and also Best New Screenplay. So it won all sorts of awards for the way it was, the storytelling and everything else. So I don't know if I'll ever break down and see Veronica because I've seen many, as I said, many Ouija board movies, and they all pretty much have the same pattern. People mess with a Ouija board things go wrong, it doesn't get closed, the demon world enters our world, and then all sorts of bad things happen. So, um, and after my daughter, since I hadn't heard about the movie, told me her little mini synopsis, oh, I don't need to see that movie. She, I've seen enough and heard enough from her to know that I don't need to see that movie, which she told me was pretty spooky itself. So that's a little bit about the movie Veronica, but the thing about Veronica is that it was actually based on a true story. So I'm going to tell you all about the backstory of Veronica. Be right back. Remember to like and subscribe, please. Thanks. So here is the backstory of Veronica. Again, this is based on a real girl. Her name was Estefania Gutierrez Lazaro. And she actually died in 1991 at the age of 18 due to the circumstances of her having the seance with the Ouija board. So she actually lived in Madrid in a place called Vallecas, which is in southern Madrid. And according to her parents, it was, this wasn't the first time that she had been dealing with the occult and the Ouija board. 
Apparently, according to her parents, she started dabbling in the occult with her friends when she was a, a young teenager. So, you know, when I think about that, I'd be like, girl, no, we can't have that in the house. But there she was dealing with the occult. And she did attend a Catholic school there. And one day she and some friends, I think they went down to some basement level room or something, but they wanted to use the Ouija board and they were going to try to summon up the dead boyfriend of one of the friends. And the, apparently the guy had recently died in a motorcycle accident. So they want to try to bring him back to talk with him. So when they were just doing their rituals, of course, a nun came down, saw what they were doing, discovered they were using a Ouija board and broke up the seance. The other thing the nun did was that she actually broke the Ouija board. So when she broke the Ouija board, whatever ritual they were doing was not properly shut down. Um, and I know there's some sort of little plastic stylus. I've seen them today where they, you know, everyone holds on to and they ask the questions and it moves around the board, but they didn't have a regular stylus. They were using a tall glass. I guess they didn't have a stylus, but they were using a glass and moving it around that way on the Ouija board. So when the nun broke the board, she also broke the glass. So everything was broken. But the thing that happened next is the thing that caused all the problems with Estefania. When the glass broke, the nun confirms, and so did her friends, they confirmed they saw a white vapor or a mist go straight into Estefania's nose. And she kind of fell down, was a little bit disoriented, but she was never the same again. Now, when I think of that, that I think some kind of demon or something entered her body because she was never the same. So that was the horrible thing that happened to Estefania. So over the next six months, her whole personality began to change. She was extremely angry. She was very hostile and mean to her brothers. She'd be literally, she'd be barking at them like a dog sometimes um, and other horrible things she'd be doing to them. She'd get into fights with them um, all the time. And so her parents became very alarmed at this and what was happening to the changes in their daughter. At nighttime, Estefania would say that she would see evil shadows crossing in front of her doorway. So she would tell that to her parents as well. And she also began to have hallucinations and also she suffered from seizures. And her parents, when all these things were happening, especially when she started having the seizures, they began to take her to the doctors multiple times, multiple doctor visits, but the doctors could never find anything wrong with her. She was always perfectly fine. But even with that, all the horrible things at home began to continue. So, and it finally got, continued to the point where a few months later, and they don't know why, she was just found dead in her bedroom. Nobody knows why she died. I don't know if they did an autopsy or not, but her death has never been uh, declared that she died from this, like a diagnosis. It was just a mystery as far as how she died. And um, it's just still to this day unexplained how she died, but her parents believe it was due to that Ouija board. Now, when Estefania died, things didn't stop there. All sorts of things began to happen in the house when she died. So I'm gonna tell you about that next. Now, as I said, once Estefania died, her home, her family's home, became haunted. It really became a house of horrors. All sorts of supernatural activity occurred there, paranormal activity occurred there, and it was terrifying to them. Doors began to slam on their own, electrical appliances began to turn on and off on their own, and whispering could be heard all through the house. And the whispering was heard by everyone, the parents and her little brother. Probably the most terrifying thing that I read, and it certainly would be terrifying to me, was that sometimes <clears throat> her little brother would be in his room and, you know, mom or dad might be in there with him as well. And all of a sudden, the little brother would be picked up by nothing that anybody could see and be thrown on the bed really, really hard. So that was terrifying. So that went on for a long time. They didn't know what to do. And it just kind of progressed as far as the things that were happening in that house. So after about a year, it was so bad that her parents called the police one day because they were all just terrified. 
they actually had had an experience that was so bad in the house that they were actually waiting outside on the street once the police got there they were crying and carrying on but didn't want to go back in so of course once you call the police they have to go in and see what's happening so then the police go in so who showed up there were actually three officers and the uh, chief inspector of the national police he came and so they entered the house without the family <clears throat> and they said horrible things happened to them they couldn't believe the things that they were seeing they also heard noises loud noises from a porch that was empty they went out there and looked and nobody was there dresser doors started opening and closing in very unnatural ways not just slamming but really bizarre ways that the doors kind of open and close and um, a, there was a cross there, like a double cross. Um, one belonged to the mom, one belonged to Estefania, and they were together, like hanging. And all of a sudden, the cross is separated, like the Jesus, like it was a crucifix of Jesus. That part of the cross separated from each other, so, and it was suddenly upside down. And there was also a picture of Estefania that suddenly burst into flames, and so her face was burnt black, so crazy things. So the police ran out of the house. And they were unnerved. The three officers did not want to go back in. And they did not go back into that house. They said, we're done with this. But the chief inspector did. He talked to the family, tried to calm them down, and said, well, let's go in together and see what's going to happen. So they went back in. And more of the same happened. And so it was so horrifying that the family decided we're going to have to leave. So they moved. They did not go back into the house. They got all of their stuff out that same day and they moved. Now the officer, the chief inspector, he did write up a report and his report was really the first report that really validated the supernatural things that were occurring in that home that gave validity to what the parents were saying happened to the daughter. And it was all caused by this Ouija board. So, and there's actually copies of the police report. I think I have a screenshot. You can actually go online and read the actual police report that's written by the um, chief inspector for the National Police. So, there were weird things happening in that home based on Estefania's uh, playing around with that Ouija board. So, that is the story of the movie of Veronica based on a true story about a girl in Madrid named Estefania. So, um, this is October you know, the month for all things spooky and Halloween. So if you're into spooky, you might want to see Veronica. It's on Netflix right now. Um, you know, I'm a horror fan too, but I've seen so many horror movies. I don't need to see this one. I know the plot. I've seen this movie many times. I've seen all the paranormal activity movies. So it's the same thing. As I said before, kids play the Ouija board. Things go wrong. Things come through. Demonic things and bad things happen. Anyway, please like and subscribe, and I hope you liked finding out about the backstory of the movie Veronica based on real events. Talk to you soon. See you later, alligator. Bye!